Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Well, many of you uh, wait to hear what music I play at the beginning of a show to see what mood I am in. And since I played no music, you know what mood I'm in, which is I'm not in a musical mood. Why am I not in a musical mood? I have no idea. Well, I have somewhat idea because the uh, con man in chief says that we don't have a complete strategy in Iraq. They ask the great man who was busy smoking a cigarette or eating Nicorette, whatever he was doing, uh, the amazing vanishing president. What's his strategy? He said, well, we don't have one yet. It's up to the Pentagon. We heard that yesterday. Now, here's the commander in chief passing the buck, or it's either the Pentagon or the Iraqi army isn't ready. Can you imagine if he had been the supreme allied commander and on the day of D-Day, uh, the waves kicked up and the storms brewed and he would have gone brewed in the back room somewhere and said, well, brooded in the back room and said, you know what? We don't really have a strategy for it, uh, Normandy. It's really the weather. It's because of global warming. We don't have a strategy to defeat Hitler or the generals aren't ready or the uh, partisans aren't ready. That's what you have in the White House. It's getting worse by the day. So you figure, well, why should I listen to him? I heard this before. We know he's a rotten, no good scoundrel who hates America, and he's just a stooge anyway of the money power. So what's the difference? Why should I listen to talk radio? Well, don't. Don't listen to talk radio. Go listen to sports. What do I care? I want to talk about the blood of the Christians and the blood of the Yazidis and the rape of the young girls in the Middle East being on your hands. I want to tell you that you are the new good Germans. You Americans are the good Germans. Republican, Democrat, independent, gay, lesbian, straight, black, white, Hispanic. I don't care what your race is. It doesn't matter what your religion is. We are now the good Germans. We are letting, we are letting this happen. I was the first one in the entire world media to point out two weeks ago when ISIS took Ramadi and they did a victory parade of a half mile long of their Toyota trucks with machine guns. And Obama, the smoker, did not launch one airplane at them, not one fighter jet, not one rocket. So I said, this proves to me one thing. We're not only not fighting them, they are us. They're our factotum army. We supp supplied them with arms that they, quote, captured from the Iraqis. We supplied them with arms. We supplied them with training. John McCain suddenly shut up his crazed mouth about bringing down Assad. You understand the whole picture? I also told you what's going on. The reason that this country wants ISIS to rampage across the Middle East and wipe out Christians and wipe out all religious minorities, and at any cost, by the way, rapes, murders, child kidnapping, doesn't matter, is for one reason only, because they're mad about knocking out Assad in Syria. That's all they're focused on. They don't care about the whys or the hows, and they don't care who dies as a result. Why is ISIS winning? Because they are our factotum. We created them. And we have the blood of Christians and Yazidis on our hands. We are now the good Germans. So that's a very important story. In the next hour, we're going to have a former FBI special agent who was selected as Time Person of the Year after revealing how pre-9-11 intelligence was ignored by superiors at the FBI. Her name is Colleen Rowley. And here's what she said about I ISIS. It's like the mad, power-hungry doctor who created Frankenstein only to have his monster turn against him. It's hard to feel sorry when the insane doctor gets his due. But in our case, that script is constantly repeating. The quest for full-spectrum dominance and blindness of exceptionalism seems to mean we are doomed to keep repeating the Charlie Wilson's Frankenstein war script. The various neocon warmongers and military-industrial complex, most of them inept Peter principles, just don't care. Amen to that. Colleen Rowley will be with us on the Savage Nation. The phone number here is 855-407-282. At the time we are talking, the uh, puppet masters are meeting... Uh, in the Bilderberg meeting. Now, everyone hears Bilderberg and they get frightened as you should. But it's a private meeting of industry titans and representative of, of industry titans, mainly bankers, or shall we call them banksters. And there is talk right now of eliminating cash in all societies. All transactions would have to go through government controlled credit systems. All of your cash will be eliminated. Did you hear this? 
Did you, did you hear this proposal or not? They want to eliminate all the cash that you keep hidden in your house for a rainy day or to buy and sell things or whatever you want. To, they want to do it under the guise of increased security. They want to do it under the guise of eliminating, let us say, narco-terrorists uh, uh, trading uh, money for drugs or whatever. And you're the one who's going to pay for it, I can guarantee you. Now, here's the thing for you to know. The Republicans would never allow this. And as bad as they are, they'll never permit this in the United States of America anyway. But if the Democrat Socialist Party takes over, which I think they will do for sure by 2018, because that's how the game works, then all bets of all are, are definitely off. You will have gun control. You will have money control. You, all Internet will be controlled. Speech will be gone. Talk radio will be gone as fast as these left wing fanatic communists take over. And that's the end of America. That's what's at stake. That's it. So that's my opening. That's why I played no music. Now I'm ready for some music. So let me pick some music now that I've gotten the uh, yogurt out of my brain. And let's go to any one of my doo op songs that I love so much. I don't care which one it is. We could do any one of them. Please say you want me. Treasure of love. Book of love. For your precious love over the mountain across the sea. We worked in a luncheonette. I saved my quarters. I put it in the Bankers Trust Company. And I kept a little savings account. Twelve years old, I was so proud of my little savings account. I used to watch it build, and I said, wow, what a country I live in. Isn't it wonderful? I put in $100, and I get $102 after a year. I thought it was wonderful. Now you put in $100, you're lucky if you get your $100 back. Is that progress? Why do we have zero interest rates? Why are they soon going to tax the money you keep in a bank? Who is controlling the money supply? What is really behind all of this? Well, you don't know, nor do you care. Why should you? What can you do about it after all? You control nothing. It's men like George Soros who's made trillions of dollars by betting against currencies, almost bankrupting England, almost bankrupting Malaysia, provoking anti-Semitism in the country for the first time in 50 years. That's old George Soros, the man that Jesus warned us about when he said, beware the money traders in the temple. Well, anyway, life goes on, and I don't know if you want to talk about this. The phone number is 855 472 How do you feel about knowing that the kidnap, kidnapping of young girls, the rape of young girls by ISIS is controlled by the United States of America because they're doing nothing to stop them? This is like the boxcars going into Auschwitz with the Jews and others in the boxcars for slave labor and, uh, let us say, their, their death. I know many of you are very brave in retrospect. I realize that 100 years ago or 80 years ago, rather, you would have done something. At least you thought so. I used to hear it all the time. Why them Germans? There? Well, now we have them. The Islamo-fascists are here again. Only they're not speaking German. And they're not reading Mein Kampf. They're speaking another language and they're reading another book. And they're not marching to the Horst Vessel song. But the atrocities they are committing apparently are on the order of the Nazis without the mechanization of the concentration camps. And we're doing nothing. And we accept the words of Barack Obama that he doesn't have a plan. Let's listen to the soundbite where your leader says he has no plan. When uh, a finalized plan is presented to me by the Final Pentagon, solution. then I will share it with the American people. It's not, uh, I, we don't yet have uh, a uh, a complete strategy because it requires commitments on the part of the Iraqis as well uh, about how recruitment takes place, how that training takes place. Uh, oh and so God. the details of that are, are not you yet know, worked I out. Mean, you know, if I were a teacher and I had a kid like this in my class, I'd throw him out. I know he's just a liar with a booming voice, that's all. A liar. A, a liar. Makes it up as he goes along. You could hear him making it up. He has a plan. Don't be foolish. He has a plan. The plan is to let them rage across the Middle East until the Islamic State is created, Assad is defeated, and then them and Israel, the United States and Israel, will be happy. And don't give Israel a pass on this. They're behind this. In fact, I may think they're behind the whole thing. I think they're pulling our string. I think they're wagging our dog on this one. Because the Israelis are more paranoid about Assad than they are about ISIS. I can, you can pretty much figure out how they figured this one out. Why does Israel want Assad gone so badly? Well, for one, Syria used to be one of Israel's arch enemies, right? So Israel eliminated Iraq as an enemy by using our armies to bring down Saddam Hussein and destroying Iraq. So then Israel was no longer threatened from Iraq. You want to you play this scenario out? You want to feed into this madness? Let's go for it. 
Let's go right down this rat hole together. So now who is Israel's greatest threat? Well, it's not Egypt. Egypt is certainly fighting the Muslim Brotherhood. Egypt is fighting ISIS. It's not Jordan. Jordan is fighting ISIS. So who is Israel's last threat in the Middle East? Why, it's old Syria with, uh, with uh, Assad. So what Israel wants now is no enemies around them. They don't care who gets killed as a result. They don't care who gets raped, murdered. They don't care how many Christians die. They don't care how many art, uh, artifacts going back a thousand years are pillaged and sold on the world market by United Nations uh, intermediaries who are making a fortune off it the same way the UN vermin are trading in elephant tusks behind your, behind your back, incidentally. Don't get me started on elephant tux, tusks because the people behind it have to be in the UN as far as I am concerned. Let them show me what they're doing to stop the slaughter of elephants and mountain gorillas. You see the poor paws being sold in China to those throwbacks in China. They want a piece of, of ivory on their, on their desk to show how bourgeois you can be. Unbelievable to me. But you look at what's happening, not only to humans in the Middle East, churches are being blown up, Christians are being killed and kidnapped, and we're doing nothing, are we? No, we're doing something. We are there. They are our Frankenstein. We created them. And so you look at the ruins of Palmyra, for example. You've read a little bit about that last week. Do you remember that? You remember Palmyra? You remember, those of you who are literate, you saw that ISIS, when they took over a portion of Syria, had taken over a, a city known as Palmyra. Now, you say, well, what's that about? Well, the first thing these throwback vermin did was take sledgehammers to... Uh, thousand year old ruins and start breaking them down because they weren't muslim enough they weren't islamic enough to these throwback moron psychopaths subhumans and they started destroying them these are ruins that have survived earthquakes they've survived fire they've survived wars but they're not going to survive the neocon army called isis and you have to understand what i'm saying to you the world is losing itself in front of your eyes because we have men of no vision and no imagination. The smallest men in history are now running the world. I think I'll pause on that vitriolic statement and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So I'm alleging that America has enabled ISIS to commit its atrocities. It's the headline on the Michael Savage newsletter for today, which you can get for free, by the way, by clicking on it on michaelsavage.com. And it took me a long while to picture. I didn't understand why we were not defeating them. I didn't understand how the media was letting Obama get away with making believe that he was doing something when he was doing nothing. Reports were coming in of our jet fighters flying overhead for days and not firing a rocket. Then I read that Iranian troops are rushing to the aid of the Syrian army. Uh, and, and then I read, uh, th not I read, I observed a column a half mile long two weeks ago or four weeks ago of a victory parade of their trucks and we didn't fire rockets. I said, they're our ally. I suspected this for a long time. And not only are they killing humans and civilization, but these Muslim throwbacks are destroying priceless antiquities which make up civilization how is it that 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 civilization survived so long and it's being evaporated in front of your eyes and i gave you an example of palmyra before and it's an important story in the ancient times in a city called baalbek and then 200 300 miles further in at palmyra you'll find ruins of columns of pink granite that came from aswan in egypt do you know how far away Aswan is? Think about this. Now, why would mankind have spent so much energy to transport these stones, these monstrous monoliths from Aswan to Palmyra? They were quarried in Upper Egypt. They were floated in barges down the Nile. They were towed across the Mediterranean to Byblos or Tripolis. And from thence, they were hauled by oxen and by mules and by men uphill to Hums and from Hums southward to Baalbek or east across the desert to Palmyra. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm showing you what ancient man did in his quest to create civilization. But why did he do that? I mean, from a utilitarian point of view, it makes no sense. But there was a point 
And that point has to do with mysticism, which approaches what I was talking about yesterday in terms of madness. There was a point of mysticism uh, in that region that was revered beyond mere utility. You see, these huge columns were then polished to a glow, a visionary glow. And these rosy shafts said that they connected man with the other world. And at great cost, men had transported these stones from their quarry on the Tropic of Cancer all the way across and all the way to Palmyra. Why? Because of the vision that these polished columns produced for those looking at them. Do you understand what I mean by men of vision? And today, what do we have? Do we have men of vision? We have Lilliputians. We have Lilliputians, Obama being the number one Lilliputian on the world stage. Reread your Jonathan Swift and you'll understand the world we're living in. And so the throwback Muslims who are living in the ninth, perhaps the eighth century, they hate all books. They would burn every book on the planet except one called the Quran. They're illiterate in virtually everything except this one book. As such, they're the most dangerous people on the planet. And yet the Lilliputians who are running the Western world are letting them rage across the Middle East, destroying antiquities, as I just said, kidnapping and enslaving and raping young girls, which should break your heart. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, why I called you the New Germans? I call you the equivalent of the Germans. We, the American people, are the good Germans who look the other way. You are the equivalent of the Germans who said, I didn't know the concentration camps existed. You are the Germans who said, I didn't know anything about it. Why, had I known something about it, I would have done something. Well, now you know about it. You are permitting the bloodshed. You are permitting the destruction of these antiquities. You, the voter of Obama. You, the supporter of the Republican Party. You are the good Germans. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. You want to see what our military has become? Would you like to hear what Obama has done to it? A married army general today introduced his spouse at a Pentagon event that featured top brass, including Defense Secretary Ashton Carter. But what made this introduction noteworthy is that so-called Brigadier General Randy S. Taylor introduced his husband, Lucas. He said, my husband, Lucas, is sitting up front here, said General Taylor, of the man, the man in the same row as Ashton Carter, Army Secretary John McHugh. So this is the world we're living in. This is what Obama has done to America. This is what he's done to our military. A man, a, gen a general now, introduces his husband at an event like this. Do you have any idea what, why ISIS is insane as they are? Do you have any idea that you're looking at two sides of a coin here? You see a ninth century view of the world from the point of view of ISIS, and you see a view of the world that is so warped and so accepted in America as the norm that most people's heads are spinning around the world not understanding how a superpower became a, st became a stupid power in one generation. The panel discussion featured a gay Marine officer, a so-called gay Army sergeant, a so-called lesbian chaplain, and a so-called transgender, who is director of the Army's Office of Energy Initiatives. And you have ISIS on the other side throwing homosexuals off roofs. This is the world you're living in, a world of total insanity. A world of opposites. All four introduced their wives and husbands. Well, that's equal rights, isn't it? That's equal rights. It's not a matter of winning wars. I mean, you don't have a military to win a war. You have a military in order to make it look like a college campus, to make everyone feel equal. Don't worry about winning a war. Don't worry about firing a rocket. Don't worry about driving a tank. Don't worry about sailing a ship. Don't worry about flying a fighter jet. Just make sure that everybody feels that they're a military man or woman. So I, I think I'm going to stop this right now because I'm actually getting a migraine. That's a pride event. Kicked off with the national anthem. 
sung by the Rock Creek Singers who are with the Gay Men's Chorus. This is your, the new military under Barack Obama. This is your military. So, anyway, this is it. That's the world we're living in. A few calls now. Maybe then we'll move on. KSFO, David, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hey, Michael, thanks for taking my call. Um, I, could, I, I disagree with you on the analogy or the, the, the example of, of the American people being like the Germans. We have the advantage of the super information highway. We're seeing this live time. The Germans didn't have that. They had the most of the atrocities, the majority of them, were in Poland in the Eastern Front, and they were just getting what they were fed. We are watching. Okay, so you're saying we're actually worse than the than the Germans who let the Holocaust occur? We're watching this live time. You can go on the internet and watch these. Videos. Does this upset you as much as it upsets me? I couldn't eat the other night thinking about gays being thrown off the roof in in Iraq. I couldn't understand how Obama can make believe he's a friend of gays and not do anything about this. I couldn't understand why the so-called gay community in America says nothing about it. I could not understand why the so-called feminists of America say nothing about kidnapping of young girls and raping them. I couldn't understand any of it. It's crazy. That, 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 that scene where they threw that, that poor man off the roof, there had to be at least 100 people watching. Well, I've seen I have the video on michaelsavage.com. There must be 100 million people who have seen that. Has Obama mentioned it in between uh, drags on his nicotine cigarette? Nothing. Zero. Zilch. This man is... Staying so I hear in, the, in your voice that you have an, an agony over this, like I do. Uh, no one's listening. No one's listening. It's just like when Kennedy went to Hitler and said that we have to make friends with this man and let him do what he wanted to do. The liberals' playbook is the same every time. Now, you mean, you mean the father, Joseph Kennedy. Yes, when he went over there in the, in the 30s and said that this is the man that we have to make example with and, say, and, they make, and make treaties with. He, liked, he enjoyed his company. I mean, well, we, we, okay, I can say where's the Republicans on this speaking out, such as the Republican candidates. Which Republican candidate has spoken out uh, against the atrocities of ISIS? I don't think anybody. I really don't. I think they're more worried about the New York Times. And isn't, isn't Ted yeah. Cruz back? Isn't Ted Cruz, am I mistaken, backing the secret trade deal with Asia? Isn't he one of the backers? Yeah, but the, all these guys are in a big fraternity. So Ted Cruz has always been a weasel. I don't, I don't care how many times he's been on Wall Banger show, and I don't care how many neocons on the, on the radio who supported him think he's wonderful. Ted Cruz is a weasel. He always has been. This, you got you nail the dead right. There is not one man in the world right now. Well, I'm hoping Scott Walker steps up and becomes my candidate. I really don't want to talk about the 2016 election. It's too far ahead for me to waste my time. But right now, we have no one speaking out on this. Nobody. So I'm heartbroken over. I mean, part of me is just wrecked over this because I feel responsible. But the truth is, I have a radio show, and I put... This information out on my national show, I feel I'm doing my part. I can't do anymore. What more can I do? Just keep doing what you're doing. Believe me, people are out there listening, and they're getting it. And, and you're giving us more fuel than you know to go after this crazy ideology because it's crazy. And now, you're calling me from San Francisco, right? The, the KSFO, is that what you're calling from? That's correct, yes. You know, I went into the city yesterday after my show. I, it's funny. I have different studios, one over the bridge, three over the bridge, one, two in the city, and I move around a lot. And it was a hot day, as you know. We went through a, a heat wave yesterday. Thank God it's over. We had a high-pressure system. It was disgusting. All the desert air was trapped here. So I went into the city by ferry because I wanted to be on the bay. When I got off that ferry boat at the ferry terminal and walked across the plaza, I was inf infuriated by the low-life scum on skateboards, the smell of marijuana in the plaza, low-lifes with their pants hanging under their crotch, just rolling around, racing at people. I said, where are the cops? Why don't they do anything to get these vermin off the streets? The streets were full of filth in San Francisco. I walked through North Beach. It looked like a sewer pipe. Do you know that? Yeah, I was there yesterday, too. I saw this. I saw the, thing. the city is a sewer pipe under this Democrat, this corrupt Democrat machine uh, that Willie Brown has created and Dianne Feinstein has created and Nancy Pelosi has created. They are vandals who have desecrated this fine city. They have desecrated the city with their so-called liberalism. Do yourself a favor and take a walk down on a, like a Sunday evening down the 6th Street corridor over Market Street. 
It's a part. Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to that cesspool. But I'm talking about streets that used to be semi-clean. Are, are sewers now under this Democrat regime, this one-party system that we have? I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Let me send you a copy of my great novel because Countdown to Mecca is set in the city that I love so much, San Francisco, and some of the scenes are set up in North Beach where I spend so much time. Incidentally, speaking of my hometown of San Francisco, which I love very much, I just hate the politicians and the politics of the area because they're fascistic at their core and perhaps the most destructive political machine that ever existed in California now runs the state. But aside from that, they have not yet been able to destroy the weather and the uh, flora and fauna of the Bay Area, which I love very much. So nevertheless, I go into the city and enjoyed it very much in my own little way, alone, totally alone, walking around with my camera, taking my eye camera pictures, which I haven't posted yet. The way the light falls on some of the buildings around 5.30, 6 o'clock, the way the shadows uh, are, are formed and just the way things look if you're really looking carefully is something to take you out of the ordinary which is what I do on a day off frankly and I wound up eating alone in a restaurant I didn't even want to talk to anybody I wound up eating alone it was wonderful to have a meal alone I come home and as I'm coming home over the Golden Gate Bridge of course the weather changed the high pressure lifted low pressure moved in and the fog came screaming across the Golden Gate Bridge for those of you who've never lived here it's one of the great wonders of nature to watch the fog come racing under and over the bridge. And you see the change of weather, you know, all of that. And then you come down onto Highway 101 and you're driving through a fog bank. Then you pop out and there's no fog. And so I get home and it's uh, windy and cold and this and that. I wake up this morning. It was ferocious winds because of the change in temperature. And my little dog, Teddy, it's interesting how he hates the wind. He was shivering like a... Did you ever see an animal shake in fear? My dog is terrified of wind. He's a, a very brave little guy and bold and all of that like little dogs usually are. But he has a real phobia for wind. Along the lines of primitives have fear of wind. Did you know that? And when I picked him up and took him outside, the wind was blowing. I mean, really like a almost like a Santa Claus wind story. And I had to talk to him, but his body was quivering from the wind. I was astonished. Now, there's no greater story to be told about that other than I calmed him down by telling him it was only wind and I tucked him under a cover and he's fine now because the wind died down. But do you know that many human beings around the planet still look and react to wind the same way my dog does? Do you know that there are still people on the planet who react to various uh, natural events on the planet as though they're some kind of mystical event that is being generated by some powers that are out to get them? Do you know that there are people in this country at the same level as those primitives who actually believe that Barack Obama is a president who has the will of the people in his mind and wants to do the best for the people? They are the same people who would fear the wind. They're no more than a dog shivering from a loud noise. 855-400-7282. Let's take some other great calls. WABC in New York. Alan, welcome to the program. New York City calls. Dr. Savage, can you hear me? Go on, make your point. My point is as follows. I have relatives that survived the Nazis in World War II because the Nazis uh, would take, at certain times during the war, they would take a segment of the camp and they would uh, segregate it from the rest and make it look like for the Red Cross that we're humane and we do things right and we're treating the Jews okay. And they were only doing this for one reason, because they were afraid of world opinion. They were trying to cover that up. Right. I don't, today, the situation with ISIS, they have put out there time and time again, burning that Syrian flyer and all the other atrocities. They, they have no problem. And so you're saying they're not only not hiding their atrocities, they're, they're publicizing them. Exactly. But, be, but because of Google and because of YouTube... And because of the moron millennial generation, who is the most worthless generation in the history of mankind, atrocities don't seem to matter to these morons. They'd rather look at their own behinds on Instagram. Instagram. Exactly. You know, one thing I'm so sick of, really getting me sick, is how everyone in the media is so worried about the millennials and so concerned about the age group of 18 to 25 and what their buying habits are and what their reading habits are and what their listening habits are. 
I could care less about them. I would rather I would rather spend more time studying a sewer a sewer mosquito than the millennials. It would be more interesting to me to study a Drosophila in a Petri dish than a millennial. They have about the same mentality. In fact, the Drosophila probably has more dignity than an average millennial today who grew up on medication and Microsoft. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Are you... Welcome back to the Savage Nation. So just to continue my meanderings, I told you after the show walking around San Francisco, I run into a street patrol officer who I've known over the years who will absolutely remain anonymous. And he tells me that there's a new directive coming out of the San Francisco Police Department where they're told to absolutely not intervene in any in in instance with minorities unless it's a life or death situation. He said fundamentally the new police, ch the police chief has put out a hands-off policy on minorities committing mayhem or crime unless it's life-threatening. He said, we are now the new Baltimore. And he says to me, Michael, what is going on in this country? How could they cater to the mobs like this? He said, we put our lives in the line every day to keep the city safe. And now we're told not to do our jobs for fear of getting sued by these vermin lawyers. And then he points out uh, a restaurant, I won't mention where, and he says to me, <clears throat> this man also owns a restaurant in Rome. And the man just came back from Rome and he said, there are no Romans left in Rome. He said, it's all Muslims. Uh, a Roman who lived in Rome his whole life, who has restaurants here and there, came back saying he's appalled at what he has seen with the burkas, the head coverings, the Muslims have invaded and taken over the ancient sacred city of the Christians in Rome, all because of the psychosis of liberalism and if you think that when in Rome do as the Romans do is something that the Muslims are going to follow wait until you see what's coming in your lifetime all you genius Millennials who think that life is just a bowl of cherries because you grew up on medication and Microsoft you have no idea what the world is in which you live and soon you will find out how they will treat you and how your liberalism will be accepted by these wonderful individuals here in the United States of America, Lynch, you know who she is? She is the new monster put into the Attorney General's office by the Republican Party. Loretta Lynch, who, as you well know, was a monster in New York's Southern District Court, was handpicked by Al Shakedown Sharpton. Al Shakedown Sharpton lobbied for this woman to become the top cop in the United States of America. And what is she now doing? She's expanding her global prosecution powers the courts are now becoming international law enforcement arenas according to the report that is linked on the drudge report loretta lynch's first duty is using foreign law in the united states of america that's what she's doing that's exactly what she's doing remember the soccer case the surprise case last month when the so-called attorney general L loretta lynch announced that Brooklyn prosecutors had indicted the FIFA officials from the other side of the world on corruption charges? What was that our business? Why would that matter in America? When we have gangs roaming the streets, when we have a border broken by the, uh, the president, when we have a Department of Homeland Security that's working for the other side, when we have an FBI that's more concerned with returning war veterans and crimes they did not commit than Muslims sitting here planning to kill us, According to the FBI, they said that they're in 50 states ready to strike. Was that just another fear tactic meant to intimidate us? And by the way, going back to my first point of the hour, if I allege, if my allegation is correct that ISIS is our factotum army and we're allowing them to rape, kill, murder with impunity, blow up churches, is that the future of America? A Christian free zone? Is that the vision of the Bilderbergs? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. When uh, a finalized plan is presented to me by the Pentagon, then I will share it with the American people. It's not, uh, I, we don't yet have uh, a, uh, a complete strategy because it requires commitments on the part of the Iraqis as well uh, about how recruitment takes place, how right that there. training takes place. Uh, and so the details of that are, are not yet Liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay, so we know that he's a fabricator. He's never said an honest thing in his life. That's why he was selected, handpicked by the rich, powerful white liberals in Honolulu to become president. He wouldn't be the first liar in the president's office, nor will he be the last. But this is a special case because America is being taken apart at the joints and a ninth century army is committing atrocities across the Middle East and we're sitting here watching this. So I allege that America, you, the American people, have enabled ISIS to commit its atrocities. I say you because if you're gay and you don't speak out against Obama's uh, cooperation with their rampage against individuals in the Middle East, then you're then you're co cooperating with throwing gays off roofs. I say you, the feminists, because if you're not saying a word about the kidnap uh, and rape and enslavement of young girls and women, then you are, in essence, the good Germans of today. That's what I said in the first hour. And I frankly believe it, or I wouldn't have said it. And so when Obama says we don't have a strategy, you know he does have a strategy, which is to cooperate with ISIS behind the scenes. I mean, what is the strategy? Think about it. Does he really want to kill people and rape and murder? Of course not. That's not what I'm saying. They're using this factotum army, which is Saddam's former army, by the way, which I saw from the get-go. This is an army run by the old uh, Republican guard under Saddam, who uh, was let to stand. This is the old Saddam army, now raging across the Middle East. It's far more virulent uh, than it was under Saddam Hussein because it has no opponents right now, and it's being enabled by the United States and Israel, in my, in my, in my estimation. And so it's, in that way, it's more dangerous. There are no controls over it at all. And what's even more interesting is that Saddam Hussein protected the Christian minority community in Iraq, while these throwbacks are decimating Christian communities, Anazidi communities, etc. I don't understand how you can't see what this means to you. And so we're talking about that. Let's go to some of the callers. Scott on WJR Radio in Detroit. Go ahead, please. Hey, I got to tell you, for somebody that I listen to all the time, that I think is right most of the time, you couldn't be more wrong today if you tried. If you were any more wrong, you'd be uh, Hillary's running mate next year. I'm the biggest conservative on the planet, and because I live in Detroit, I live right near Dearbornistan, and I live near all these people that have come to this country. I am not a German. And that's kind of a kick in the teeth to all the people that went over there and fought and died for their freedom that they won't fight for. Two weeks ago, on Memorial Day, I got up, watched the morning news, and found out that the Iraqis had ISIS outnumbered 10 to 1, laid down their arms, and walked away. And if you won't fight for your freedom, you don't deserve to have your freedom. Ramaldi is about the same size and population as Kansas City. Can you imagine somebody going in and attacking Kansas City? We go in to take Kansas City back from them. We outnumber them 10 to 1 and lay down our weapons and say, ah, screw it. Let's go to Canada. These guys are you. Well, I think, I think you're missing the bigger point. The bigger point is that we are enabling ISIS. Isn't that what you heard me say? 10 to 1, and they walked away. Well, I, I, you're making your point over and over again, which is that Iraq didn't defend itself, therefore everyone should die. But you're certainly not justifying the rapes and murders, are you? No, I'm not justifying, but if you won't fight for your own freedom, 
Why are we sending our men and women over there? You know what? You know what I had. To well, hold on. I didn't say send men and women over there. We have an air force representation over there, and they're flying overhead, looking at targets, and not firing rockets. Why did we not even fire rockets at that one half mile parade of their uh, of their pickup trucks? I've been asking for four weeks. Man, I am all for bombing the daylights out of them. We had an enemy in this country one time that flew airplanes into buildings, cut people's heads off, fought to the last man, and wouldn't do it. We bombed them into oblivion until they dropped to their knees and begged us to stop bombing them. If, if, listen, man, I turned the place into a parking lot. I, I live where these people are from. Why would they fight? He waves more of them into our country. You know, you can fight. You go fight. You can get yourself hurt. You don't want to do that. Screw that, man. No, but you know, you, I don't think you're, you're hearing me clearly. I didn't say we should put boots on the ground. I said we should put bombs on the ground. And we certainly could have bombed their convoy three weeks ago, couldn't we, in their victory parade? And, and for that liar in the White House, that double-talking fraud with his booming voice, to get up there and say we don't have a complete strategy? When we hear from the Air Force that the poor men flying in the fighter jets overhead are being told not to fire a weapon because the girls in the Pentagon won't give them permission in between their gay sensitivities training? between dating their girlfriends and their boyfriends, the nightmare that he's created? You. You, know what, man, you know what I don't like? You know what I don't like? I don't like smart weapons. You know these ones like if you want to put a bomb in the ninth window over on the left on the 14th floor, but you put it in the sixth window on the ninth floor, it's a war crime? I don't like that. I like when we darkened the sty skies with B-17s and laid about a 10-mile patch across Germany. I understand so it's, it sounds good, but then we would be killing more Christians and more Yazidis than they are killing. I'll tell you something about the Christians. Let me tell you something. This, this, I live in West Bloomfield, Michigan, and you can, you can look this up and Google this. That is a, there was a church that was broken into, a Chaldean church broken into up on Maple Road. It was broken into the Sunday night, Monday morning of Easter. And they went in there because they knew there was extra money. Do you know who went in and broke into the Chaldean church? It was Chaldeans. If they won't respect their own culture, how can we expect them to respect ours? I don't care what they are. Stay over there and fight or don't come here. So you, you would rather see all of them kill each other is what you're saying? I'd like to see them fight for their own freedom. I'm sick of us sending our money, our equipment, our men, and our women over there. I, I started to say this a minute ago. I watched this thing on Memorial Day weekend, and I was so angry I had sweat running down my back. And you know what I watched two hours later? I watched the Indianapolis 500. And at the beginning of that show, they had a video on how they escort a body home when it dies. And a C-5A lands on the ramp in Dover, and the ramp drops down for their own freedom? Okay, but we're not disagreeing. I said, don't put boots on the ground. I said, put bombs on the ground. And I am alleging that Obama has created a factotum army in ISIS. Obama and Israel are doing this in order to bring down uh, Assad. They're playing the old British game of divide and conquer. That's my allegation. And I don't think that we have to now say kill everybody in the Middle East in order to uh, uh, stop this, this rampage. That's my point. The nation was is that we're all Germans watching this happen. I'm sorry. Too many of us went over there and died for people that won't fight for their own freedom. I'm sorry. And I live in the middle of it. And if any of your listeners don't like what I have to say, you get your butt to Detroit and go to Dearborn, Michigan. You live there for a week, and then you can point your finger at me. So what you're saying is you live around the Muslims and you see what they're like? Is that more or less what you're saying? I think the problem where we, this has become confused is that we think it's the Muslims, and we confuse it with the, uh, uh, the Christians are over there, and I'm telling you it's one and the same culture. Different religions, one and the same culture. Uh, so you say it's not Christian Muslim. You say it's a Middle Eastern mentality that is retrograde, that is disturbing you. Right, and we go over and we create a problem. They say, well, these people are Catholic, and these people are Protestant, and these people are Lutheran, and these people are Baptist. Screw them. It's all the same team. And, and I, it, they, the Chaldeans broke into their own church. And that's just one example. You don't have enough hours in this show to go on. But I live here in the middle of this stuff. I live here All in right. the middle. So you see an invasion of America right in front of your eyes, and you see purgatory coming to America. Yeah, 
if we, we just wave more of them into the country. Let me tell you. Well, you know, well, let me I, do this for you. Um, I, are you are you a father? I hope you are. No, I I, I love my children so much. I didn't have any. They, they <laughs> no, <laughs> but you fought for our country which, of course, turns you into an American hero automatically. I'm going to send you a great Father's Day gift, which is Countdown to Mecca, and I hope you, that you will enjoy reading it because I can guarantee you in my book your vision for um, annihilation of the enemy is a little more realistically expressed than you may have heard on the airwaves. Stay on the line. That book will go out to you tomorrow and probably arrive in time for uh, Father's Day. 855 Let's move across America to uh, New York City. George on WABC, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, I have a question and a comment on the millennials. My question is this. Since America has entered into the Dark Ages, do you see any chance of her having a renaissance? Of our nation having a renaissance? I, you know, several of the smartest people I know have a very dark vision for this nation. And they continue to argue with me when I, they think I'm a Pollyanna when I see salvation coming. They don't agree with me. They're smarter than me. They're richer than me. They're self-made men. And they believe that America is finished because of Obama and liberalism. They believe that liberalism has destroyed the country permanently. That there's no coming back from it. That the insanity of liberalism, the insanity of gay marriage, the insanity of open borders... The insanity of decimating our language, the insanity of stepping on our culture has so pervaded the land and the mindset that there's almost no stopping it. That's what they think. We're on the edge. Well, well, so you're asking me what I think. I'm never a Pollyanna. I'm a rather pessimistic individual who can be optimistic at times. Uh, and we talked about this in, in other ways yesterday. I say to them... And I said this in an email yesterday to someone who was very depressed over it, a young man with everything to live for who built a, a, a fortune on his own, who sees nothing but horrendous, a horrendous future for America because of what's been done to it. He says there's no coming back from it. And I said all diseases are self-limiting. As a trained epidemiologist, I can tell you that that's a fact of reality. All epidemics are self-limiting. Did you know that? Yes. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean all epidemics eventually burn themselves out. When they consume all of the potential victims, except those with resistance to the uh, illness, eventually the epidemic stops. And I believe that the epidemic of liberalism will eventually consume itself and die out. Well, I hope so on that point. As far as the millennials go, they would be a great candidate for Mao Zedong's cultural revolution. Absolutely. They are the new Red Brigades. These moronic children who have no conscience, they are the new Red Brigades with iPhones in their, in their brains. All right, my friend, Father's Day is around the corner. If you name the title, you get it. What's my novel called? The Countdown to Mecca. And I'm so a you, ca father. you came loaded for bear. Well, you're getting that novel going out to you right away. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Now, here's something that you can sink your teeth into. The uh, horse champion, American Pharaoh is going to stud for $175,000 per. $175,000 per foal. Champion American Pharaoh to stud for $175,000 per. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. Meanwhile, Rubio, a real, a real donkey, is fundraising with Oracle's Larry Ellison in Silicon Valley. Now, why would Larry Ellison, a certifiably... Brilliant businessman. Why would he fundraise with this ice cream man, Rubio? There's nobody. There's a non entity. Because Rubio's in favor of new B1B visas, so Larry Ellison could have a bigger yacht, that's all. Instead of having a 415 foot yacht, he could have a 715 foot yacht with cheaper labor. Then he could train workers like Disney did. Take American IT workers, like in the concentration camps, train them to uh, replace themselves with workers from India who are working at half the salary and then throw them out so that Michael Iger can make more money. 
So the pigs who run Disney can make more money, they fire American IT workers. It's like all hands, wherever you turn, there's nothing, there's no center anymore. There's no meaning, there's no center, there's no... I know, I know many of you are dis, 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 distraught over this. You say, well, who do you, who do you look to? How, why is this happening? Why, how are these guys are worth billions and billions of dollars? Why are they so greedy? Why are they so de- greedy to the detriment of the United States that they would bring in workers from India who work for half the price of American workers, and to add insult to injury, they make the American workers train the Indians at their own jobs, and then they throw them out. And that tells you who Rubio is, an ice cream man, like I told you all along, a hand-picked stooge, a basic idiot. But well, you think Rubio is presidential material? Rubio was never Senate material, although in America today, that, that has no meaning. Everyone's a senator. If Barbara Boxer could be a senator for 400 years, anybody could be a senator. If Dianne Feinstein can get away with what she gets away with, if Dianne Feinstein can get away with being the chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, who knows nothing about intelligence except how to capitalize on it for personal gain in the minds of anybody who sees what's going on, why then Rubio would be a perfect candidate for the office of the president, wouldn't he? He's one of many in a long line, isn't he? Only a little stupider than most. All right, I think I have exhausted these things. Coming up is Colleen Rowley, former FBI agent, retired FBI special agent, was selected as person of the year way back in 02 after revealing how pre-9-11 intelligence was ignored by superiors at the FBI. And she's talking about ISIS being our Frankenstein. She said it's like the mad power-hungry doctor who created Frankenstein only to have his monster turn against him. And it's hard to feel sorry when the insane doctor gets his due. She says ISIS was created by the various neocon warmongers and military industrial complex. Most of them inept Peter principles who just don't care about America or what they're doing. So when Ms. Rowley appears on the show in a few minutes, I'm going to ask, you, ask her who these neocons are. I want to know if it's the same group, if it's the same group who advised Bush to go into Iraq and created the false flag of WMDs, which were taken up lock, stock, and barrel by the so-called conservatives in the radio business, who were still selling WMDs as near as three weeks ago as justification for going into Iraq. Let's see what she has to say. Who are these neocons who have created ISIS? I'd love to hear what she's going to say. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, you're listening to the Savage Nation. It's just one man's opinion. I sit here and observe and try to draw some conclusions. A few weeks ago, after the throwbacks in ISIS captured Ramadi, I went on the air and I said, wait a minute, there's a victory parade a half mile long of their pickup trucks. Our air force is allegedly in the sky. We didn't fire a rocket. I said, wait a minute. So they must be our army, our factotum army there. And now today we read more and more about this. And we read that the Syrian rebels that John McCain has been secretly arming and training through the CIA in Syria to overthrow Assad have just seized the largest army base in Dara. So joining us right now is someone who knows a little bit more about it, if not a lot more about it than I do. She is a retired FBI special agent, and she revealed how pre-9-11 intelligence was ignored by superiors at the FBI when she worked there. Colleen Rowley, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. I'm sorry, my dog just went crazy when you joined the show. I'd like to strangle him, but he, he doesn't have any self-control, Colleen. Colleen... <laughs> Uh, you say that ISIS is like the mad power-hungry doctor who created Frankenstein. Who are the neocons who did this? Well, um, you know, I think some of our uh, foreign policy think tanks and uh, people who think they can play, you know, global chess, uh, you know, 3D global chess, I think uh, think too much that they are capable of all of these very convoluted strategies, which often include, if you even go all the way back to Charlie Wilson's war, but it has really been a common theme all along, they think they can arm one faction to fight against another as a proxy force. And, you know, maybe it works for a short while, 
but it almost always backfires, just like in the Frankenstein story. But, Colleen, why do they want to take down Assad so badly? Is he worse than, than ISIS? Well, you know, we've, we've demonized quite a number of these uh, foreign, uh, foreign leaders. And some, I, you know, there, no, one, no one likes them. I mean, it's not a question of liking these foreign leaders. But oftentimes that's for strategic reasons. And, and I think Assad falls into that category. He certainly, if you compare him to Saddam and Gaddafi and, and other, uh, you know, other political leaders in, in the Mideast, I don't think he's any better or, or any worse. But I think they use that, and, and all along, I was a little suspicious that there were the so-called good, moderate rebels, that whole notion that there are uh, good forces and that we should, you know, support and arm these freedom-fighting, democracy-bringing moderates. Um, to me, that, to me, I'm more of in the non-intervention because I've seen this over and over and over now, and Libya, of course, was the, the last example in, in saying that the, the rebels in Benghazi were somehow the good guys and we had to help them. And I think we should really just learn the lesson that we really ought to, to not think that hard and just stay out of it, in my opinion. Well, I have the same opinion as you do, but after Assad, what? Who's going to take over? Who will take over? But ISIS is going to take over all of Syria? How is that going to work out as, to, the, to, to America's uh, interests? Is Israel involved in this strategy? Um, you're absolutely right about, um, you know, worrying about what would happen next. You know, the, that old uh, Orwell, not 1984, but Orwell, Orwell wrote another book called Animal Farm. And it's about how power co-ops and this idea that, you know, you put somebody in power and they're going to, you know, it'll be a cakewalk and bring democracy, etc. I think you, you very much nailed it. I think if ISIS, of course, um, we're told, of course, as American citizens, that they are the beheaders, they're the, they're the most evil, etc. How in the heck can anyone think that this would be a, a good step, as, in fact, the, the uh, defense intelligence uh, report from 2012 actually seems to be saying that this would be um, good for the United States if ISIS was to get a caliphate and to get more power. Well, hold on. What report is saying that? The D DIA report is saying that ISIS creating a caliphate would be in our interest? Yeah, it, it actually says that it would put up, um, you know, it would strategically uh, be a buffer to the, the, the greater powers then of, of the Shiite that were Iran, Iraq, and even Syria created a kind of a, a clear line of power of Shiites. So their idea was that they would put this buffer in there. And that's what the, the DIA report was saying. And I should add, there's a lot of other cor corresponding corroborating evidence besides that DIA report. If you look out there, uh, there's... Wait, is this, is this all emanating from the sorority around Obama, the college girls who have no military experience? Or as you allege, is it still the old George Bush team of neocons? Who is actually behind this? Oh, you know what? I'm thinking it might be kind of an unholy alliance in some ways. Um, Samantha Power uh, is certainly has been behind a lot of it from the start. And, and then she has Susan Rice and, and uh, Hillary Clinton, etc. They were all part of this, even stemming all the way back to Madeleine Albright, this idea that of uh, right to protect and humanitarian war and protecting. But that's kind of the nicer, I guess, more feminine face of it. And then the other side of it, there's, there are people who really think that they can play chess on the 3D global chess board uh, and win. You know, and, and those yes, that's because they've nullified the Republican Party, who consists of a bunch of ballless idiots, and they think they can do the same to these Middle Easterners. I think they're quite mistaken. But I keep pushing for this neocon issue because you say in your statement the various neocon warmongers and military industrial complex, most of them inept Peter principles, just don't care. Who are these neocons? Well, there, I, you know, there weren't that many. You know, the main ones that you could have named that, that were before the Iraq War were Wolfowitz and Douglas Fife and Libby and, and, and the, of the founders of the project for the New American Society. Okay, fine. Now, wait, let's focus again. Wolfowitz, is he still alive? Yes, he is. Uh-huh. And he's still alive. Okay, and who, who was the other one you just mentioned? I thought that these people had gone to the reward. Who was the other character? Douglas Fife. He was, in, he was involved in the Office of Special Program, I think is what it was called, but it was 
all that correlating, all that. But aren't these the same uh, whiz kids who advised Bush to go into Iraq? Yes. They, in fact, they were top officials. And, and also Scooter Libby was one. Um, they have not gone away and they have not died. Uh, and nor have they been incarcerated, which they should have been. They now are in think tanks, uh, including the most powerful foreign policy think tank, the, the Council on Foreign Relations. In fact, they're, they're in one committee with their, uh, the one uh, New York Times uh, reporter who, was, um, who printed the false information. Her name was Judith Miller. One of the committees on the Council of Foreign Relations, she's on it with them. But, no, they haven't gone away. What's, what's worse is I think they've even grown. I think they've added to their numbers. And so there are a lot more uh, of these think tanks that have kind of uh, sprung up. There's never any consideration as to accuracy. And so it seems to me that when you've been wrong, 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 someone should say, hey, I don't want to listen to you anymore. Stop, uh, stop uh, publishing op-eds and stop publishing strategy papers when you can't prove that you've ever been correct about anything. Ms. Rowley, you're a retired FBI special agent. You allege that there was pre-9-11 intelligence that was ignored by your superiors at the FBI. Is that correct? Yes, and, and it, in fact, did lead to a two-year-long Inspector General investigation, as well as a Senate Judiciary uh, investigation, which more or less confirmed what I was saying, uh, that there were all of these, they called it uh, failure to connect the dots, but it really, it really was a systemic failure, and it wasn't, of course, in my case, I was talking about the FBI, but the CIA and the NSA had perhaps even greater failures, and so really, government-wide, 9-11 was a systemic failure. So by what I'm, if, I'm, if I'm to believe what you're saying, and I don't doubt it at all, that's why I wanted you on the program, in essence, Obama is really not that much different than, than Bush in continuing the same crazy policies of these neocons, in essence, who think that they can control the world and manipulate it, that they're great puppet masters. Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, there's, there's an old story about the emperor has no clothes. What people forget is the ending of the story. Even after the little boy yells, uh, you're naked, the emperor, uh, and even when people maybe start snickering, he continues the march. And I think that pretty much sums up what, what's going on with Obama. He is absolutely, in some cases actually, even doing uh, stupider uh, things. And in, in some cases, maybe he's trying. You know, the best you can maybe say is there are some areas that he's trying. Uh, but I think essentially we are watching the end of that uh, emperor has no clothes story, where they just continue to march forward and, and really look like they haven't learned anything. Well, uh, where do these guys like Wolfowitz and Fife work? Who, who employs them? Well, you know, I think they're, they get uh, huge salaries from sitting on boards, largely. Um, I can't say what Fife and Wolfowitz, but Zellico, I just read a, a thing where he gets, on one board alone that he's on, he gets like 250, 300,000 for sitting on one board. I think that there are um, the things. So it's more or less like the Clinton Library. They reward these guys with these slush funds. Yeah, well, there. I think these these think tanks are pretty well funded, um, and they all. Colleen, let's go back to Benghazi. There's a lot of rumor going around that the ambassador was killed because he was transferring arms from Libya to Syria to support the so-called good guy rebels, who we well know were never good guys. Do you think that's factually true? You know, it's been uh, written and reported by um, a variety of people, uh, of writers, including uh, Seymour Hersh uh, wrote this not too long ago. But it's, it's, they kind of span the gamut. And so when you look out there and you see um, uh, reports like this, and it's, you can't just say, oh, that's Republican or Democrat, whatever, but they're really kind of spanning the gamut. I think that they're probably, at the very least, now whether he was directly, how direct his involvement was, but did he know, did he know of arming of the rebel groups, and did he participate in some ways? I would say that the evidence is pretty clear that he did. Now, exactly what he did, of course, I don't think we know. Well, you know, I've noticed that, that McCain, a crazy warmonger who tried to start a war with Russia over Ukraine, and was screaming like a lunatic, foaming at the mouth for arms to the, quote, moderate Syrian rebels to overthrow Assad. I've noticed that the lunatic has shut his mouth for a few months because, in fact, by arming ISIS to overthrow Assad, he's gotten his way. Would you say that's an accurate statement? 
Um, well, for, he hasn't been all that noisy lately, and I don't know the reasons for that. You know, I don't even know if this is correct, but you, there are these photos that you will see, and they'll, they'll, say, they'll identify some of the characters who later then turned out to be uh, in ISIS and El Nusra, um, the Al Qaeda aligned groups in, in Syria. Now, if I, if I was even close to being in those pictures, yes, I would be quiet myself. But you know, John McCain isn't a quiet guy, and I don't think he ever really um, admits that he's done anything wrong. And I don't think that even photographs. I suppose he can explain them. And, and number one, I don't know who those are. It's hard to tell when they just have people and they say, "Look, uh, John McCain was meeting with all these people." But you know what? It does. It does make sense because um, of these other. Hey, Carl, I hate to interrupt you, but a few weeks ago after ISIS, ISIS took Ramadi and they had the victory parade of a half mile long of their Toyota trucks with machine guns, when I saw we did not fire a single rocket, that was it for me. I knew that they were basically our army. That was my conclusion. Is it false? Well, you know what? We should, that's the number one question. Why, you know, when we are uh, launching uh, wars and bo drone bombing in all our other areas. Uh, why are why are we being so ineffective in this case? And that's a very good question. Uh, it seems that there are lots of allies. You know, I'll put allies in quotes too, like Saudi Arabia and, and other countries, Gulf countries. And the the one thought is that we're afraid then of making some of these allies mad if we uh, you know if we concentrate on. Uh, what do you say to those people who are cynical and say it's a win-win situation, let them kill each other? Well, you know, if, if that quote-unquote worked, some of these things, if they worked, um, I wouldn't be so much of an, a, an opponent of this. But most of this stuff is not working. It is actually increasing, and ISIS is the last uh, terrible example. If this worked and we were reducing the level of terrorism and making Americans safer and more secure, I, I would be for it. I haven't seen any evidence of that. I've actually seen our security uh, be uh, reduced. Since 9-11, pretty much everything that's gone on has increased terrorism and has reduced security and safety, not only for us, but for our allies, certainly for the poor journalists and humanitarian workers in the world. It's just a really bad situation. So until, until it seems people can... Uh, figure this out and start acting wisely, I'm just going to continue, you know, reading and writing about it. Colleen Rowley, R-O-W-L-E-Y. I read your article, your quotes on InfoWars. Where else can we read your work? Well, um, I don't write regularly, but I write for Huffington Post and uh, Consortium News and um, sometimes Antiwar.com. There's a variety of places that I post at. Well, here's where uh, op opponents on many issues, I'm sure you're very liberal in your viewpoints, and I'm very conservative in most, but I see that we see things the same way when it comes to the decimation of individuals and artifacts in the Middle East, and I want to thank you very much for being our guest on The Savage Nation. Thank you so much. It's 49 minutes after the hour. This is The Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-7282. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Same old monsters, Wolfowitz, Douglas Fife, the same people who gave us Iraq and made up WMDs. They're at it again. And so it doesn't matter which stooge is wearing the tie and suit. Apparently, someone else is running the puppet, the puppet show. Chris, on KWQW Radio, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, I'm uh, what you consider a uh, millennial, and I do not wear that, uh, that title proudly. I, uh, I totally agree with you about our, my generation and... Uh, I have to say this, you know, given all of the resources at our fingertips, given all of, you know, everything that's out there for us that previous generations did not have when it comes to... Yes, because done. information is not knowledge. Information is not wisdom. Information is just a bunch of disconnected facts. And the millennials are the dumbest generation in American history, brought up on medication and Microsoft. They're as dumb as a mosquito, most of them. And they have no conscience. 
They are the red brigades of our time. Ghouls. And I'm sick and tired of everybody in the media catering. Millennials listen to this. They buy that. Who cares what they do? Who cares what ghouls buy? Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's been a hard day's night. Welcome to the uh, Savage Nation. We're talking, I guess, about why are we letting a terrorist group rampage across the Middle East? Why are we letting Obama get away with double talking and lying us in the world that he's got a plan in ISIS when he doesn't? And that's what we've been talking about. I don't know a bigger topic. To me, national security is the number one issue. Always has been. Uh, the next big issue would be how much taxation there is in the country, whether they're robbing me uh, to the point where I can no longer go to work anymore. And so the issue now is national security. We have a double-talking liar in the White House who says, yeah, we don't have a strategy yet. It's not worked out. It's the Iraqis' fault. It's the Pentagon's fault. But uh, let me have an Army general introduce his husband at a Pentagon event. That we have a strategy for. He has no strategy for ISIS, but he has a strategy for pushing gays and lesbians into the military as far up the command as he can. That he has a strategy for. But no strategy for defeating ISIS. That's all. <clears throat> WMAL in Washington. Perry, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, um, I want to answer one question about Wolfowitz. He ended up with the World Bank, sir. That's number oh. one. He ended up well, you see, all, all roads lead to the World Bank, I guess. Right. And um, like I told you a long time ago, this thing is really bigger than Obama. It's bigger than any of these presidents. It's, I told you, it's a, a consortium of international bankers and, of course, um, the neocons. They have their own plan for the world, and, and and just the president is just one of the tools, the buttons that they push and control. I, I agree with you. I, I'm not arguing with you. But Obama is so nakedly uh, uh, BSing us that it agitates me. Well, you know, he's playing the role that he's... Well, I understand he was selected because he's a good windbag. I get it. He's able to bamboozle most of the people in America. But doesn't it offend you to hear him come up with a statement that we don't have a full strategy yet in Iraq? And you know he's making it up as he talks. He's like Pinocchio, making it up out of whole cloth. Well, you know, I, I can't say whether he's making it up or not because I'm not that astute into that, you know, the military policies and what's going on. So I'd be wrong to make a, a firm determination either way. But with the, the, the country and the world's in trouble, period. And we have to come back to more of a, a, a humble spiritual base and come together as a, as a community and, and now, I noticed you said a humble spiritual base. I, I heard you just now. Are you saying that only religion can save America? We've been told religion destroyed America. Well, only the, only the true following of God, whether you're Jew, Christian, or Muslim, uh, I mean, you follow the tenets of the three monotheistic faiths and do it thoroughly without worrying about um, certain politics or things that truly, truly are serious about it. Then it would be a much better place. I remember, I'm only 53, but I remember you did pray in school. I remember that there were so many things that are not in place that were in place then, and I'm a young man, that is no longer in place, and it goes backwards. Yes, but who took prayer out of the schools? Who took God out of the pledge? The anti-God ACLU. They're the ones who have unraveled America uh, joint by joint. They're taking the country down piece by piece. Yeah, well, I never looked at it that way. But think about it. Think about the evil lawyers in the ACLU and what they've done. They're the ones who pushed gay marriage down our throats. How do you feel about same-sex or gay marriage? Do you think that's a moral thing? Not at all. And I don't judge anybody, and I'm not, and that's way above my pay grade, but I'm not with right, Hold it. Good, you don't judge anybody. Then why do you oppose gay marriage? 
I don't when I say I don't judge anybody. Like if I met somebody who says, Oh, I'm gonna marry my husband now, I'm not gonna say congratulations, I'm not, but I'm not gonna say, You you I'm not you evil, you this and I'm gonna say, Well look, I don't agree with that. I hope you see a better way to do things, but you know, hey, you know. But why why would you oppose the false canard of homosexual marriage? What is it about it that you would oppose? Well, first of all, marriage is between a man and a woman, period. In other words, the redefinition of the word itself, it's right out of some kind of playbook of the Soviet Union. It's absolute mind-bending speech and mind control. No, you don't, you know, it's too much. I mean, I, I, well, I, I work in the Pentagon, and there was a poster up about this is recognizing transgender month or transgender, and it had the rainbow colors and the cross, and it had the military symbols of the different services. I'm like, wow, wow, what is going on? You know, you know, you know, I'm an observer of nature, Perry. We don't know each other. We probably differ on some things. We agree on others. But sometimes when I can't take any more of man, I look at the birds or I look at the seagulls and I look at them. I look at a pair of ducks, a, a male duck and a female duck. I see them swimming down a little creek with little baby ducks behind them. How come they're not confused? Oh, they're not. But you know what the difference Why is? does a duck have more sense than most Americans? What it is, I'm going to tell you what it is. Man is the only one that is given by God free will. And given that free will, we go outside of the way we are capable of being. See, the birds and everybody, they don't do, they don't mess up because they're doing what they're made to do under the direct instructions from what they was created from the beginning. Ants do the same thing for thousands and thousands of years. But man with free will, since we have free will, we freely mess up and do things behind backwards. <laughs> you're, hey, Perry, you're a good preacher. I got to tell you, in your own homespun way, you're a very good preacher, Perry. Got on me last week. I, 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 um, I learned. You know, that. you and I should get up on a pulpit one day, and I say it my way. Then Perry, we would like two instruments, like dueling guitars, who agree with each other. I say it one way, then Perry gets up and does it his way, and he says the uh, the the birds have more. I say the birds have more sense than man does. The animals do, and then Perry says because the, uh, we have free will and they don't, and they do it God's way and they don't do it wrong, and we do it our way and we do it wrong. That's what Perry just said. Yeah. Perry, is there any hope for this country in your humble view? In my humble, well, to put it this way, it's a very very minuscule small window of opportunity for it to happen. And what has to, but what has to happen, Perry, to save this nation from destruction? I know it sounds crazy. The average person listening to radio, scanning the dial, says, who is this guy, Michael Savage, talking about doom and gloom and destruction? Why, I'm a happy man. This is a perfect world. The sun is shining. I got money in my pocket. I can buy an iPhone. I can go to the movies. I can watch a basketball game. I can buy a pair of shoes. I'm a free man. Well, I say they're slaves, Perry. Well, actually, you know, Satan has done a marvelous job. This money that I just spent in Starbucks and the money I'm feeling in my pocket as I'm talking to you, that has zero value. It's an illusion right now. And all it takes is the push of one button coming from another nation, and it'll be like Monopoly money. It's like me going to Monopoly, pulling a, 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 a orange $50 bill, and going to the store. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. We have a currency that has no value whatsoever, which is why I continuously tell people to call up Swiss America, my number one sponsor. It's not just that they sponsor the show. I absolutely believe that gold is the only fundamental reality left in this world of fiduciary money. Madness. Yeah, anything that has an exchange of value, I'm, I am going to um, invest in some bullion and some coins because it might be the only way I'll get a loaf of bread. Can you imagine what would happen if that foreign nation pushes that button and our currency does fundamentally become worthless overnight? What kind of panic would hit this country? Where would all of these crybaby millennials go for their Starbucks and their iPhone? Total chaos. Total, Total chaos. chaos. Total chaos. Well, Perry, I know that you probably are a man who likes to read a good novel. I'm going to send you a fast read countdown to Mecca uh, for your reading enjoyment. Please stay on the line. I'll send you my novel, and I hope you enjoy it. Susan, WJR, welcome. Uh, you're one of the few women who listen to the show of the millions of listeners I have. I have 24 Savagettes, and you're one of them. Thanks for calling. I would like to respond to your comment on the idiot millennials, as you like to refer to them. And I want to be measured in my response. But these kids were not raised in a vacuum. They were raised by the end tale of the baby boomers and some of the Generation X. So if you're going to have a messed up, as you have called them, the messed up idiots, 
they have some idiot parents that are also raising them because kids are not raised in a vacuum. They get their, their morals, their character from their parents. And furthermore, the millennials are not old enough to have voted for all of the crap that we have going on in our country right now. It was the baby boomers and the Generation Xers and even the older baby boomers that have voted for all of this stuff. And the millennials are going to have to be the ones that have to pay for it. I take such... And this word is such a stupid word, but umbrage about what you said. I have two millennials, one who just graduated from Hillsdale College. I have done my darndest to raise productive human beings, and it, from my perspective, it is the parents' fault, not the millennials, because they're taking their cue from their parents. How would you define, what's a millennial in age? What's the age bracket for a millennial? The, the millennials are about 31 down to about 17 in that range. I mean, All right, so let, let's turn the clock back 15 years when they were babies, some of them. When I was talking on the radio about their so-called mothers in coffee houses, feeding them a piece of cake and a coffee or a chocolate in the morning, after all the hard work that I did and millions and, and others did in nutrition, to teach about the dangers of sugar and caffeine to a child in particular, to see these mothers doing this to them simply, they didn't have the, they were too lazy to make them a breakfast. They figured just stuff them with something and a riddle and pill and send them off to school. Don't you think that has something to do with their mindlessness? No, I don't think that has because we're you we're talking about two different things. You're talking about nutrition, and what I'm talking about right now is the potential destruction of this country. And if we do make it, sugar and caffeine will be the last thing on their mind. But what, no, but I don't think you understand what I'm saying to you. The the reason the millennials are vacuous in general and have almost no conscience, no social conscience. They agree with anything that is thrown in their direction because they were raised as little liberal robots. One of the reasons for that is that they were drugged since their children, many of them. In one way or another, they were raised on medication. Don't you understand that? No, they have not been. You, I don't know where you're... Well, you mean your children haven't been. But I am not talking about your children. You're making it overly personal. I am talking about the larger population of millennials. Millennials have not raised millennials. It was a different gen generation that were raising the millennials. No, I just but was saying the same thing, and that other generation were lazy, and they would just as soon drug the child as raise the child. You and, then the ch and then the child grew up on medication, which destroyed their conscience in many cases. That is my point. Generation before them. This is a generational problem. I get, well, we're saying the same thing, and you're over. You're, you're going over and over about the same because it's not you or your children. You're telling the entire audience that you did it differently. I'm agreeing with you, but I'm saying in general, the millennials are a vacuous generation of mindless children. What I am trying to tell you. And now you'll go back again and say it's their mother's fault, right? No, I don't think it's the mother's fault. I think it's a generational problem that has been handed down. B government has become... Well, 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 let's stop blaming the government. When you have a child that was raised holding a device in his hand, or her hand, uh, a, a, a robot walking down the street would have more brains than a child does with, a, with an iPhone in the hand who steps out in front of a car and expects the car to stop for them. Did you look? Did you look at the parents that are going right next to the child? They're also on their devices. That's what I just said. So we're agreeing. We're not disagreeing. You're missing my point. I don't. I don't care. Well, what is your? I don't know what your point is. You're going in circles. No, I'm not going in circles. You have consistently spoken about the the millennials as being a worthless. Uh, generation and you are wrong the generation prior to them is well let's stop with who caused this you're not telling me that this millennial generation has a morality to them are you but the morality came from the generation before them well it doesn't matter who did it i'm telling you that i see them as a very dangerous generation of soulless individuals who are permitting the country to melt down all we're saying is all you're saying is that their parents are responsible. Just, can I say one thing? They did not vote for what we have right now. The lion's share of what is going on went on long before these... Uh, when have you last seen a millennial in a high school march against the rape and slaughter of women and children by ISIS? Tell me when. 
All you see them marching for is global warming uh, and gay marriage. That's that's all that's on their mind. They're brainwashed robots. When is the last time you've seen any adult that would be in the category of the age of their later 40s, early 50s? I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is oh, so, that... But two wrongs don't make a right. So you're telling me there's two generations in a row that are, that are soulless and mindless. Is that what you're saying? What I am trying to tell you is to put all the blame on one generation when there is another generation... It doesn't matter, who the bl it doesn't matter where the blame falls. I made a generic statement that the millennials, and I'm sick and tired of hearing the word, and I'm sick and tired of catering to them, and I'm sick and tired of hearing what they think, because they don't think. All they do is spew the data that they get off an iPhone or what's been put into their silly little heads in the, in the public schools. I am trying to get you to think of something. All right, here we go. It's enough already. This woman is like a robot herself. I think she's exactly the problem we were talking about. No matter what you say to her, again, go like a broken record, like a needle stuck in a vinyl record. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. What is a millennial? What exactly is a millennial and why do I have a problem with millennials? Well, uh, a person reaching young adulthood around the year 2000. What does that mean? Millennial generation or generation Y. A demographic that is so coveted by the media. No precise dates on them, but birth years ranging from the early 1980s to the early 2000s. And we know that they're basically a soulless generation of mindless, mindless robots who don't seem to be involved at all with politics. They've been brainwashed since childhood by the school system, the uh, government schools, to think that there are only two problems on earth, gay marriage and global warming. They have no evidence for global warming, nor is there any evidence that by agreeing to gay marriage, it will make society better. And yet these brainwashed children think that both are true. If you confront them with the facts about global warming being fraudulent in the minds of many respected scientists, they would look at you the way the Red Brigades would look at people in, uh, uh, let us say, China at the time of the Red Brigades. They would blink at, th at you as though you are the fool. Nor would they listen to your evidence because their minds, whatever's left of them, is made up. Now, how did they get this way is the issue. And what are we in for if these millennials, so-called, eventually take over this country, which they will do? I can tell you exactly what's waiting for you. So let's start with you seniors who are looking forward to a nice retirement in Obamacare to take care of your every need so you can go on a cruise and play golf. They'll pull the cord on you faster than you could say Barry Obama. They'll be the ones to say, who cares about those old fools sitting on those incubators? Get rid of them all. We don't need them. That's what they'll say. Welcome to the new young Germans. A new generation of young Germans called Millennials. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. A march of the Millennials, so-called. I know it's a, a facile phrase of young people. And advertisers are obsessed with this demographic, thinking that they determine everything. But uh, there are things that we have to talk about here. Because if you're going to focus on the me generation... You'd be focusing on two generations before them. No, we have to focus on what's called the me, 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 I, I, I generation. The generation of soulless zombies. Oh, they buy things. Oh, yes, they do. And that's very important to marketers. And it's an important demographic, no doubt. But what is this demographic? What do they think? What's on their mind? Do they actually know what's going on in the world around them? Do they care? Or do they care only about their own pleasure? what restaurant they're going to eat in, what shoe they're going to buy, what vacation they're going to go on, what device they're going to be using. And what's going on with the millennials is a very important story because they are going to craft the future of this nation. It's not going to be the 60-plus the audience that's going to craft the future of America. And it also explains how ISIS can rampage through the Middle East, raping, murdering, enslaving, without a peep out of the millennial generation. The only people complaining about it are me, people of my generation. The only people noting that Obama is behind ISIS is my generation. 
The only people agonizing over it are my generation. The so-called sensitive millennial generation is concerned with very, very few issues. Issues that have been beaten into their brains in the uh, government schools, by the media, and of course at home. Those issues are predominantly the, f the fake issue of global warming. No matter what evidence you present them, their minds are made up. They're like zombies. They're like uh, the, the youth in other countries that worshipped a dictator. In this case, they worshipped the dictatorship of no thinking. The dictatorship of believing, not thinking. So the issues to them are what? What are their issues? Well, global warming. They want to save the planet. Who doesn't? And let's see. Uh, gay marriage, of course. If all gays were allowed, allowed to marriage, why the world would be a perfect place. So they say nothing when gays are thrown off the roofs in Iraq. They don't even know what's going on. They don't talk about it. They say nothing when young girls are raped by ISIS. But if anyone says anything about it, they say you're anti-Muslim or you're Islamophobic because that's how these, uh, these mindless children have been raised. And so what's going to come next? You tell me what's going to become next is the issue. KWQW, Ron, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir, Dr. Savage. Uh, I think it's the hippie generation, which you have mentioned before, which is the cause for the millennial generation, because they are looking for excuses for themselves uh, for being failures. And their failures have to be subsidized by the kids who are brought up by them. So, therefore, they don't really uh, want to admit failure because of their kids being failures, because it makes them look failures. Have you ever seen the mobs in the streets of Ferguson or Baltimore, in addition to the black thugs? Did you see who was marching and pushing them behind them? It was the millennials. Now, the same millennials who are now deriding themselves, be, excuse me, deriding the fact that there are no longer police to protect them, they're the ones who drove the police out of these cities. Do they have any idea that there are consequences to their behavior? No, because there's never been a consequence to any of their behavior. They were indulged by their hippie parents. Yes, sir, that's exactly right, and it's because of the way they were brought up. And if they don't have to respond or have excuses or prove themselves to their parents, how are they going to do it in public to police forces or, or the public in general? It's impossible. So they've been raised by the ACLU, by the radical left, to hate police, to love immigrants, to hate Christians, to, 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 to despise religion, to assume that anyone is religious is a bigot. Is that not the, the, the mentality of the millennial? That's, a, it, that's exactly right. And I, as much as I don't want to defend them, they, they were kind of indoctrinated because they... Because of yeah, the they, they, were, they had, yes. Yes, they have been indoctrinated. They are the Khmer Rouge of our time. They are the soulless monsters who are definitely not on the side of the good guys. They're on no side whatsoever. They don't know what to think. Correct, sir. And, and, and they won't know what to think in the future either as long as they're being uh, you know, pretty much facilitated by the, the liberal media, which endorses and, and, and indoctrinates them even further in any channel. You right. As long as they have sunglasses and a yoga mat, they think the world is a perfect place. Exactly right, among other things, which includes drugs and homosexuality behavior, such as his gender character, and everything that's supposed to be acceptable and, uh, and appreciated and approved, when it's really not, but the liberal media imposes that it should, therefore we all have to accept it because they have the majority of the, of the listeners, if you will. Well, that's how a man like Obama gets away with lying, because if you say anything about his lies, they call you a racist. They have been indoctrinated to believe that anyone who criticizes a person of color is by definition a bigot. Even if you're right, you're wrong. This is, the, this is the problem we're having right now. I think that I have focused on this for one reason, is that one of the reasons we're having so much trouble in America is because we have an entire generation of mindless, soulless robots who have no idea about the bigger world. It's only the yoga mat. It's only what they're putting in their mouth and their yoga mat that matters. Thank you for the call, but hold it. Let me send you a gift called Countdown to Mecca, a book that no millennial would ever be seen with. 855-400-7282 is uh, the phone number. WVNN Radio. Lisa, go ahead, please, on the millennial issue. What's on your mind? Yes, I just want to say as the mother of two millennials, it's been very hard to raise them. Um, we weren't ever allowed to spank them because they would be turning us into the social services while they were at school. 
we could never really say, wait till your dad gets home, because if dad got home and spanked him, they were going to turn him into social services. We've never known our neighbors well enough, or not never. We were a military family, so we have no neighbors. But you know, as a kid, there was always that fear that the neighbor would find out what you did and tell your parents, and your parents mm-hmm. would get in trouble. But mm-hmm. we've never been allowed to do that with our kids. We've never been allowed to spank them. That's wrong. We're supposed to put them in time out. We've never been allowed to do anything as far as their schoolwork goes. They were taught new math. They were taught new reading where phonics wasn't offered anymore. They were taught all kinds of things about the environment and whatnot. They came across as cute little teddy bear stories, but they were really politically motivated. You know, they've taken away recess. They put 120 kids in a 60-minute PE class, so the kids are getting no exercise, no chance to blow off steam. And they're, we're not allowed to spank them or reprimand them in any way or else we're going to be in big trouble. And so about the only thing left that for us to do was to try to medicate the ones because society wasn't letting us try to control them in ways that generations upon generations upon generations have dealt with squirrely. And yet large corporations from McDonald's to uh, General Motors are trying to think about how to appeal to this youth audience when this youth audience is not even driving cars to the extent that they used to drive cars, by the way. There's no connection between them and cars. Did you know that as well? My nephew recently um, was traveling um, across country for the purpose of delivering the car back to his dad because he said he no longer needs it. Meanwhile, right. In other words, it's dirty to drive a car. He likes to ride a bicycle like a coolie did in China. Next, right. to, me pushing a, next to me pushing a rickshaw and think it's very fashionable. Right, but my daughter... You, you wake up and the millennials will be pulling rickshaws around the city with, with visitors from China thinking that they're, they're very hip. That'll be, that'll be the future of America. Little millennials running with, with a rickshaw behind them with Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese uh, vis- visitors sitting in the seat taking pictures of nothing. Chinese food they've ever had in their whole lives on top of it. Hey. Well, you could see where I'm coming from because... What I'm saying is very important in some ways. In other words, we have social ills, we know that. We always have and we always will. But from a distance, looking in at this revolutionary change in demographics in America, and now we have to ask ourselves, who are these people? Are they like us? Are they different from us? Well, they're like us and they have two eyes, a nose, two legs and two arms in general. They have hair and they can breathe and they can think. But they're more like robots than they are like people with souls, in my opinion. They were raised, and I'll stick to the words, on on uh, on medication and Microsoft. They have no social conscience whatsoever, except for global warming and gay marriage. Am I wrong about that? Uh, It's completely wrong, no. Because I will say that my daughters are active in doing charitable things and members of organizations. Yeah, but you're the mother. You're the you're the mother of your daughters. You're obviously a a social conservative, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know you're almost afraid to say it, but most of the millennials were raised by social uber liberals, and the children are worse than them. The problem that we have in America is that we have a lot of Christian parents who are raising really great citizens. Yes, that's right, and the millennials probably look upon you as a bunch of Nazis. Right. Well, they think that well, some of these millennials are very good citizens. But they're not Christians. They're not doing it for the right reason. They're not. And they're good citizens with regard to what? Hating the police and supporting immigrants. No matter what the immigrant does, the immigrant is good. And anyone who opposes immigrants is bad. That's their mindset. I know the mindset. I can read it better than anybody. One thing I am really expert at is reading the tea leaves. I have the greatest stethoscope in social science. And I am telling you that these, these millennials, this millennial generation is so dangerous people cannot even understand what's coming at them. They have no idea what's coming at them. I do. I've seen it before. I've read history. Only this generation is even worse. Because if you take a soulless, mindless generation and you add to it drugs and iPhones, no knowledge, just facts. No knowledge, just information. No wisdom, only facts. That's not a generation that I have much faith in. That's the generation that loves Barack Obama. I'm going to send you a wonderful novel that the millennials would never touch called Countdown to Mecca. In fact, they probably have to go to a shrink if they ever saw you bring it home because it tells the truth about what's coming in this country in many different ways. Oh, do I have good callers on this. Oh, do I have good callers on this. Oh, did I step into a bear trap. 
Terry on WJR, go ahead, please. Uh, Michael, uh, I'm calling because I am a nanny, and I take care of children. Uh, I've been in many households, and you're talking about the millennials and the kids holding devices. Well, that's what's raising them. They're getting, it seems they're getting the morals and the folklore from the games that they're playing. Um, right, so what are the morals of the millennials? Are there any? Yeah. Give me what I want now. That's it. Okay. Okay, so it's little nasty children in adult bodies. Not what I need. They're little nasty children in grown-up bodies. Yes, demanding constantly. And if they don't get what they want, they scream until Mommy and Daddy gives it to them. And, Michael, um, I'm all about nutrition. I'm all about herbs. I'm 63 going on 64. I don't take any medication whatsoever. I do herbs. I still got all my teeth, my hair's done, and my waist, and it's still brown. And we you are uh, in my household, that's what we do. We use good nutrition. We keep the sugar away from the kids. Okay, but hold on. But the millennials were raised on junk, weren't they? Yes. And they yeah, I'm, I'm, I've watched it. I've seen it for 20 years. The mothers who look good-looking, many of them, dressed well, I've seen them rush into Starbucks with their child in their hand. I've seen them buy them a piece of cake and give them cocoa in the morning. And I want to scream, lady, you're killing your child. I don't say any, uh, not a one word. Because as sure as I was sitting there, they were also, that child was also on a psychoactive drug, which was deadening them. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Ritalin was tried to, they tried to have my son take Ritalin, and we wouldn't give it to him. And uh, that was because they wanted to have all the boys in the classroom on Ritalin. And That's right. They wanted the boys to be, to be uh, uh, let's use a word for it, emasculated, chemically emasculated. The feminists destroyed education in America, and they wanted to chemically emasculate all the boys. They're doing it to our men in the military right now. They're chemically emasculating our troops. They're doping them to death. And I homeschooled him. And I have 10 acres in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. So part of our program was going out on the land that was blank land and turning it into a farm. We now have an herb farm up there. We grow reishi mushrooms for cancer and that sort of thing. Uh, my son is now like 35, and that's, that's his law. Can you imagine what's going to happen in this country if, in fact, the economy does take a downturn, if a foreign country does pull uh, our debt? and does break the dollar, what would happen in this country with children who cannot drive a nail, turn a screw, or grow a vegetable? Tell me what would happen to this nation. So, so uh, button on a shirt, uh, wash their own... You know, it's, inter it's an interesting conversation. When I went to high school, I remember I had to take, sh even though I was in the academic uh, track, I had to take shop class. I had to learn how to wire things. I had to learn how to fix things. Do you know that they even had me in, in millinery class? Would you believe that? I was embarrassed to say. I, I thought it was sissified. I had to learn how to sew. And they said, no, it's not sissified to learn how to sew something that rips. Can you imagine that? But I also had a rifle team in the basement of my high school. I also learned how to shoot a rice, rifle in the basement. And I was on the rifle team. And guess what? No one shot themselves. And no one ran through the hall with the rifle shooting anybody else. I'm sending you a copy of my novel, Countdown to Mecca. I'll re be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Look. Many of you think I'm bashing the millennials just for fun and effect. You're wrong. It's terrifying to think what's coming. That's a generation of about 80 million people. And marketing executives are obsessed with satisfying this audience, this demographic. Well, if it's all about money, that's one thing. Everybody needs to make a living. Everybody needs to sell ads. Everybody needs to have their, their programs listened to. But I'm not going to sit and cater to a, to a mindless, soulless generation. And I'm talking in generalities. Here I get an email that says that Seinfeld agrees with you. Even liberal Seinfeld stopped playing colleges because he says those kids have no clue. He says they use words like racist, sexist, and bigot and have no clue what the words mean. That's Seinfeld, the man who created liberalism on television. 
even he has now become burned by his own tongue. And so what I'm saying to you is be very cautious here in catering to this, uh, in stampeding along and catering to this generation. And we're going to talk more about it as time goes on. Who are the millennials? Why, they're the ones who when they dine out, for example, they don't go out for food. They want an exotic adventure. And so they'd rather go food truck following rather than to a restaurant. They think they're exploring the world by dining at a Peruvian truck. That's the generation that's going to defend you from ISIS when they come to cut your throat. 